Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. So uh, starting from today, since considering the JE mains is very near and we are going to start a crash course basically on YouTube here, right here. So it would be a 30 day video series where you will get one shot videos for each and every chapter and some related hints to their PYQs. I will try to explain the concepts very deeply so that you can apply those concepts when you actually come across the problems. So it's like complex numbers. Now, we are going to explore uh, the different properties and identities that are not usually taught. Uh, so, now, basics, you all know that Z is equals to A plus IB. This is called a complex number where I is root over of minus 1. The properties of I are very simple. As you can understand, I square should be minus 1, I cube should be minus I, and I to the power 4 should be 1. Correct? Now, apart from this, what we are going to explore today is Euler's identity, how to use it and what are the roots of unity and how to find nth roots of unity, what are their properties and how to use them in problem solving. So we are not going to really look at problems. We are rather going deep down the theory hole here so that you can use this to your advantage in the problems. In the next sessions as well, we will try and do as much theory as possible wherever we want. Okay. So, uh, complex numbers are basically points. So, therefore, the rule of trichotomy does not apply to them. That means you cannot compare to complex numbers. You cannot say Z1 is greater than Z2 or Z1 is less than Z2. You can only say if Z1 is equal to Z, which means they are the identical points. So, the complex number A, B can be plotted here, where this is basically the real axis and this is the imaginary axis. This is called the argon plane. Okay. The distance from the origin that is O, the point 0, 0, the complex number 0, is called the modulus of the complex number or R. So for a complex number Z equals to A plus IB, R is given as root over of A square plus B square and its argument theta is given as tan inverse of B by A, where B is called the imaginary part and A is called the real part. The real and imaginary part also have an expression in terms of conjugates, which is real part is Z plus Z bar by 2 and imaginary part is called Z minus Z bar by 2. Now, you should all know this uh, basic uh, fundamentals. You can get it from any book or your materials. But uh, let us explore something better here. So, I will introduce you basically the Euler's identity and what it does. So, Euler's identity is this uh, or you can actually call this Euler's formula. So, it's basically saying that e to the power i theta is equals to cos theta plus i into sin theta. Okay. Now, why is this useful? If you remember, the polar form of a complex number says that if you have z equals to a plus ib, you can write this as r whole into cos theta plus i sin theta. Correct. And if you can do that, you can simply using Euler's formula write it as r into e to the power i theta. So, this is something you are going to use in your problems. For any complex number, you can substitute it as modulus into e to the power i theta, where theta is its argument, right? Now, understand this, that mod of e to the power i theta should be mod of cos theta plus i sin theta, correct? Which should be equals to 1. So, this is an important point because whenever you have in problems, you see that you have problems where you have mod z equals to 1. So, an important point should be whenever, whenever you have mod z equals to 1, put z equals to e to the power i theta. And this would relatively simplify the problems. Okay. So, uh, this is a very uh, useful technique. And even if you have some other quantity, you can put uh, according to this definition. Let's say you have mod z equals to r rather. You can basically put z equals to r e to the power i theta. So, the exponential definition is very useful because of the properties of the exponential function. Now, using this, what we are going to do is we are going to find the roots of unity. So, complex number is not very uh, enriched in JE theory. Uh, in terms of JE, the theory is not really much, but uh, this is basically the last part of it. But uh, the problem solving enhancements can be improved considerably using this kind of theory what we are studying here. So, roots of unity, what are they? So, the solution to the equation x to the power n equals to 1, solutions to x to the power n equals to 1 are called nth roots of unity. Okay. Now, where n is a positive integer, nth roots of unity. 
and you are already taught the special case where for n equals to 3, you simply have x cube equals to 1, whose three solutions are given by 1, omega, and omega square, where omega is nothing but minus 1, uh, so not plus minus, plus minus 1 plus root 3 into i by 2, correct? Now, this is only for the case 3, right? What about the higher cases? So, what happens is, notice that 1 can be written as cos of 2 pi k for where k is any integer plus i into sine of 2 pi k where again k is any integer, right? Why is this true? Because you see, even multiples of 2 pi, like multiples of 2 pi would always produce 1 in when put inside cos. So basically cos 2 pi is 1, cos 0 is 1, cos of minus 2 pi is 1, everything. And any multiple of pi, any integral multiple of pi inside sign would produce a 0, which means this part is non-existent, right? So we can write one like this, which basically means we can write e to the power 2 pi ki according to Euler's formula, correct? Now, therefore, what we can do is x to the power n is equals to 1 is equals to e to the power 2 pi ki. And therefore, now taking the nth root on both sides, we can do that because we have complex number on both sides now. And we do not really need uh, need to be aware of, you know, uh, negative roots or something like that because it's complex numbers. Everything is allowed here. It basically becomes this, which is nothing but cos of 2 pi k by n, according again, if you break it into i into sine of 2 pi k by n. And k runs from 0, 1, and all the way up to n minus 1. So these are called the nth roots of unity. So basically, if you call this as xk, let's say xk is the kth root, basically, then remember that k equals to 0 to n minus 1, the sum of the nth roots of unity is basically 0. And you can understand this uh, better from Vieta's formulas and how to manipulate this x to the power n minus 1 um, polynomial equation. You can find out all possible combinations of this nth roots of unity and their sums and products. And using this, a lot of uh, sums like sine 2 pi k by n and stuff can be found. Uh, for example, for instance, from this identity, we can directly compare, put this value and compare the imaginary part to directly get that, okay, k equals to 0 to n minus 1 sine of 2 pi k by n is equals to 0, correct? So this thing, this uh, this type of identities can be easily derived using nth roots of unity. And one last thing is de Moivre's theorem. De Moivre's theorem. And in de Moivre's theorem, what will happen is you simply have a bunch of uh, expressions cos theta one plus i into sine of theta one, cos theta two plus i into sine of theta two and all the way up to cos of theta n let's say there are let's say there are n such expressions where theta 1 to theta n are n angles and this is equals to basically cos of theta 1 plus dot dot, dot theta n so basically what happens is that it all multiplies down to uh, expression of the same form where the angles are basically added okay which is marvelous and this is something you can prove yourself using Euler's formula you can prove it using Euler's formula, correct? And that will complete the theory session. And in the next session, we will do problems of complex numbers based on whatever theory we just learned. So this is going to be the pattern for the next 30 days. We are going to learn a chapter, a theory, whatever is required for the J means. And we are going to then solve problems based on it, okay? And also generate some ideas from it. Hope you like this video and hope you will like the series that's going to come up. Also, we are going to launch a new app. So the app will be live very soon, where you will have uh, courses and a series at minimum affordable prices with live sessions and now clearing sessions as well. So uh, I will announce it once it's up and live, the website and the app both. So uh, very excited for that. Anyway, let me know and I'm sorry for the delayed uploads because I was busy at some work. Thank you again. If you're new to the channel, please do subscribe.